Hello everyone and welcome to FE Choices Week 21. Um, today is our first event of the week and we're going to be talking all about A-levels and T-levels. Um, so today's event um, is part of a, a bigger week's worth of event all around FE Choices um, designed to help young people aged 14 to 19 think a little bit more about career choices and the different training pathways are, that are available once you finish your GCSEs and leave secondary school. Um, so I'm going to be hosting today's event. My name's Caroline on behalf of Stockport Council, Stockport Jobs Match, Gander Careers and Bridge GM. All of the information that you will hear about today from our seven different college and sixth form providers will be available on the Stockport Jobs Match website. Uh, there's no www dot, you just go straight to stockport-jobsmatch.co.uk forward slash career hyphen options and on there you'll find a range of tools from all of the provider details that you're going to hear about today and um, to more information about a levels and t levels what they are the differences between them and the benefits of studying those pathways um, as well as other things like career guides and employer day in the life videos um, so um, who's today's event for? Uh, well, today's event um, is um, aimed at, as I say, 14 to 19 year olds. So it could be that you're listening in today um, during school hours um, as part of some of your careers advice study. Um, it could be that you're watching this later or watching this back on YouTube at a future date as part of your independent research. Um, you might be in year nine at school and currently starting to think about your GCSE options and what subjects you should be um, studying for and how that could link up to your either your end career goal or your next steps. Um, you could be in year 10 and starting to think about applying for colleges, sixth forms and training providers. Or you could be in year 11 and you've already made those career choices. You have a place confirmed, but maybe you're concerned about getting your results. Maybe you feel like when you made that choice originally, you didn't consider all of the available options or maybe everything is going completely to plan, but you just want to have a plan be in place in case you change your mind or don't like the option that you've chosen um, already. Um, all these events are really, really useful for anybody who left school last year or the year before and maybe started on a pathway that they've decided isn't exactly right for them and you want to change your mind or didn't get your place and are looking to re-enter full-time or part-time education. Um, so as part of these events throughout FE Choices Week, there's a number of different types of information that's available to you. Um, first of all, every single day we're going to be kicking off a different theme. So today is A-levels and T-levels. And um, each day we start off with a classroom video, which, as I say, you can either watch at school or at home later. Um, and these are kind of a 20 to 30 minute introduction to each pathway. Um, so today we started off by talking about A-levels and what the entry requirements for A-levels were, um, how you study for an A-level, um, the history of an A-level, the subjects that you're available to study, um, what kind of level of qualification an A-level is, and how that equates into things like UCAS points, um, what the benefits of A-levels are, um, and um, where they can take you in terms of your future career, whether you want to go into university or not, um, as well as who, <clears throat> excuse me, who A-levels are suited to. So if you enjoy studying in a certain environment, why A-levels might be the right choice for you. Um, we then talked about T-levels, which are a relatively new pathway that lots of our providers are going to be talking about this morning to highlight exactly what T-levels are, why they were introduced and where they came from, the industrial placement element of T-levels and how all of that works, um, as well as the differences between um, T-levels and A-levels and apprenticeships, for example. So those classroom videos are a really, really useful starting point um, to introduce the pathway and give you an overview um, of all the different elements that you might need to know about before making that choice. 
Um, we've also produced a range of student resources and these are all available on the Stockport Jobs Match website um, on that link that I included at the start and will come along again at the end. Um, and those include things like um, a skills builder. So as part of deciding what comes next, it's really, really important to know yourself and what you're good at, what your strengths are, what your interests are, and how those could be transferred into either an end career or helping you decide what comes next in terms of the learning environment that you go on to after 16. Um, we've got a career roadmap, which is great whether you know what you want to do or you're absolutely clueless. And um, you start by putting in where you are now, you enter where you want to get to, and you think about all of the different milestones that you'll need to achieve along the way in terms of qualifications, skills that you learn, experiences that you gain and things like extracurricular activities as well. Um, we then got a pathway evaluation tool, which is a really, really great thing to print out and use along the way um, as part of this week's event. So you might want to print one out and do a pathway evaluation today on A-levels and another one on T-levels. And that shows that you've thought about lots of different things, about lots of different pathways so that you can feel like you've made a really impartial and well-informed decision about what happens next. And we've also got a weekly planner. So if you're studying this as part of some careers activity in school um, or um, during the school holidays or at some point on your own in the future, um, this weekly planner is really, really useful so that you can jot down the activities that you've done and what questions they might have thrown up. So things that you've discovered along the way um, and what else you want to go and explore or questions that you want to ask maybe your teacher, your parent or carer, or careers advisor, your work coach, etc. And it's also a good tool because once you've made a note of all the activities that you've done throughout the week, we have on the website a participation certificate that you can download, print out and take to your careers advisor, your work coach, etc. and ask them to sign as evidence of all the great things that you've done to find out more about further education pathways. Um, we've also got an opportunity for you to get some personal advice, either via our Zoom Q&A sessions or our helpline, which will be available all day on Friday. And the number for that and the details for submitting those are on the Stockport Jobs Match website. Or you can drop an email at any point to info at stockport-jobsmatch.co.uk and we'll be able to send you um, the answers and the links that you need. So. Um, today's two hour event is all about hearing a little bit more from some of the great sixth form and college providers that we've got um, locally and hear from them firsthand explain a little bit more about A levels and T levels and the benefits of those pathways and what they look like. Um, so today we're going to be hearing from first of all the Manchester College and they're going to give us a nice introduction to T levels. Um, we're then going to hear from um, Stockport and Trafford College talking a little bit about A-levels as well as touching on some of the other areas. Um, we're going to then come on to um, Aquinas Sixth Form College who are going to explain all about the entry requirements. What do you need if you want to study a specific subject at A-level as well as the extracurricular activities, all of those other things that are important when you're um, studying at college. And Severian College are going to be talking about um, the transition from secondary school, so how the learning environment is different, how you can prepare yourself um, and the support that's available to you. Um, then we're going to be hearing from um, Cheadle and Marple College explaining a little bit more about the types of courses and subject matter that you can study at A level um, and what that looks like in terms of um, exams and coursework and things like that. Um, we're going to be hearing from Clarendon Sixth Form College talking about the different options for study and Loretto talking about what happens next after A levels and T levels and what opportunities that opens up for you. Um, so first up this morning, I'm going to jump straight to the providers now because we've got a really action packed schedule and lots and lots of content to cover. Um, so first up, we're going to come to um, Megan um, at the Manchester College. So just bear with me where, whilst I switch you across to Megan, who's going to give us a lovely introduction um, to T-Levels. Morning, Megan. Morning. Thanks, Caroline. Um, morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. My name is Megan, as Caroline mentioned, and I'm one of the school liaison coordinators for the Manchester College. And we've also got my colleague Ellie with us today. And we're going to go over what T levels are, and um, because they are a brand new qualification, so some of you, you know, may have heard of them, but might not have the relevant information um, about them to make an informed decision. 
And then we're also going to talk about Manchester College and the things that we have on offer as well. So if you could just pop to the next slide for me, Caroline. OK, so what are T levels? As I said, a brand new qualification. They are a level three qualification, so two years long and they're equivalent to studying those three separate A levels. So whether you want to go on to university, if you want to go straight into employment or a higher apprenticeship, as long as you get the grades needed and um, they will be available to you as your future pathway. So they were launched in September 2020, uh, but we actually begin our first delivery of T-Levels this September in 2021, which is super exciting. So they're brand new courses that are developed in collaboration with employers. So they are written and also co-delivered by employer partners, which is super exciting, you know, really meeting the needs of those industries and making sure that our students leave their qualification with, you know, not only a T-level um, certificate, but also those employability skills and that work placement experience as well. Because again, it's not just about your qualifications when you go out into the big wide world, it's what else can you bring um, to your CV or your university application as well. So the thing that makes T-Levels really unique is that industry placement. So it's a minimum of 45 days. Now that's a really quite a large industry placement. And as we like to say, you know, back in my day when I was in school, I went on work placement and, you know, did a bit of filing, did a bit of brew making, um, but that's absolutely not the case with T-Levels. You know, you're going to be really getting that, that second to none experience. You're going to be getting involved with the activities and those employer projects as if you were working in that company so that, you know, when you go out into into employment or into university, you're going to have the knowledge and the technical skills that you need to be successful within that industry as well. So super exciting. And uh, if you could pop onto the next slide, Ellie's going to cover the next one for us. Thanks, Caroline. Perfect. Thanks, Megan. Yeah, hi everyone. Um, my name's Ellie. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about the T levels that we will be delivering at the Manchester College and just a little bit more information about what is involved within a T level. So as Megan said, we're going to be introducing our T levels from September 2021. So the first cohort of learners started applying for them and um, a lot of them have said they are really, really excited to start that T level. We are offering them in four different areas, so digital, construction, education and childcare, health and science. As Megan mentioned, T-levels have been introduced to fill that skills gap and meet the needs of the industry. And that is why they have been co-developed with those employer partners and businesses that we do work with. More T-levels will start coming about over the next few years. So if you know you, know you are 14 years old, and you're not finishing school this year, uh, we, we are offering different T-levels from September 20, 2022 and so on and so forth. So T-levels really do combine that A-level element and that BTEC practical element as well, because you've got that classroom theory where you learn about the industry as a whole, and you also learn about your occupational specialism as well, and um, more predominantly in that second year. And then you also get that practical learning element as well, uh, which involves that industry placement of 45 days. And as Megan said, that really is extensive. You are working on projects with that employer. You're gaining real valuable industry skills to get you prepared for that world of work. Um, so you meet the skills and the demand that the industry does need. The minimum entry requirements for a T-level qualification is five GCSEs at grades four or above, including your maths and your English. Um, if you don't quite achieve those, we do offer a T-level transition year, which Megan will go into more detail about on the next slide. Um, but these are just the standard minimum entry requirements. Different T-levels will have different entry requirements. So, for example, with construction, um, you'll need ma mainly a sixes in your maths and your English, and it will include a science as well. So after today's event, make sure you go onto our website, so the Manchester College, and just check out those different entry requirements when you look at the different courses we do have on offer under T-levels. So if you could just move on to the next slide, Caroline, and I'll pass you back over to Megan. Thank you. 
Well, so Ellie mentioned that T-level transition programme. So what is it and who is it for? So the T-level transition programme is a year's programme um, and we do actually offer a small qualification alongside that so that, you know, the T-level transition is so that you can feed straight onto that full T-level. But if you decide that actually the T-level might not be right for you during that first year, then you do get a small qualification that you can then take away with you um, and, you know, go and either do a level three programme or go on into an apprenticeship but the aim is to get those transition students straight onto that full T level. It's the students who like Ellie mentioned don't meet the standard entry requirements in terms of their GCSE grades but also in terms of them as a student as well so you know that industry placement is 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 a high expectation for our students so if they don't feel confident and comfortable going out into the workplace and feel that they would benefit from spending a year on that transition program just to gain those employability skills you know learn how to work on their own initiative and just learn how to be within a workplace then the transition program is available for them as well Throughout the transition programme, we will focus on English and maths predominantly to improve those GCSE grades. So you'll get two opportunities to resit those exams. So that'll be in the September, October time. Um, and even if you know you get the entry requirements that you need, the following January, you'll still get the option to resit them to get the highest grade possible so that when you do leave college with, you know, your full level 3T level, you're in the best place you possibly can be. As I mentioned, it's also get students employer ready and to progress onto that full T level. Students will do an industry placement on the transition programme and that's again to improve the confidence, learn those teamwork and skills, how to deal with professionals, but that'll be a minimum of 15 days rather than that extended 45 day placement. And all T-level and T-level transition students at the Manchester College must attend a summer school alongside the entry requirements and the summer school is the, the applicant's opportunity to look past their GCSE grade profile. So, you know, if you've got nines across the board, but you've not got, you know, them employability skills, then we might suggest the transition programme for you because you might not, you know, you know be as successful as you should be within that full T level program. Whereas, you know, a student might not have met them GCSEs wise, but might be, you know, professional, got a really good attitude to their learning and is ready to go out into the workplace. So that's your real opportunity to shine in front of those employers um, and also your tutors and fellow peers as well. All of our T levels and T level transition programs are available on our website. So obviously starting this September, we've had lots of applications in already, which is amazing, but we are still taking applications for T-levels and T-level transition programmes. So if there's something, you know, that, that triggers something and thinks, actually, I'm really excited about this, this might be right for me, there is still time to kind of apply as well. Next slide, please, Caroline. Brilliant. Um, so just a little bit of information about us and the Manchester College, who we are and what we do. Um, so for the second year running, um, we have been named the number one college in Greater Manchester for achievement. So that is something we are really, really proud of. That means more and more of our students are progressing through the levels of study with us and achieving their qualifications. And we've also been graded good by Ofsted as well. We don't just have one campus in Greater Manchester, it, our college is spread across six different campuses and every campus will have a different feel, a different atmosphere and a different number of students. So when you can get the opportunity, if you are interested in studying with us, whether it's this year or the following year, um, do come down to open events when you can do, when they are available or do watch our virtual events on our YouTube channel, which is TMC Promotions. Uh, so we do offer a variety of technical and vocational career routes so the t-levels that we're here to talk about today but we do also deliver uh, btec qualifications as well and we also offer apprenticeships through our total people partner provider and if you do want to continue your studies with us we do have degree level study programs through ucent manchester 
And across every campus, we do have a great range of facilities to make sure you can achieve your qualification. So a lot of our courses will replicate that real life working environment. So we have salons, we've got restaurants and we've got amazing new sport facilities coming as well. So we are investing £140 million in some brand new facilities. So the redevelopment of our Openshaw campus. So we're going to have a brand new multi 4G sport pitch. Uh, we're going to have a gym as well and some amazing new construction workshops. And we're also opening up a new campus in the city centre. So it's just by the MEN Arena. So if you ever drove past it, it's absolutely massive. You really can't miss it. Um, but that's going to be the home of our, a lot of our creative courses. So we're going to have amazing new box office theatres. Um, we're going to have a cafe as well uh, and some music equipment for those students that take music with us. And we're also offering through our BTEC study programmes and T-levels, 10 brand new industry excellence academies and 22 brand new centres of excellence. I understand I've gone through that quite quickly, but I know I'm keeping an eye on the time, so I'm going to pass you back over to Megan. Um, and if we can have the next slide, Caroline, that'd be great. Yeah, we are talking about our vocational study programmes later on this week, um, so please do join that if you want some more in-depth information. But just as a whole, these are what we have on offer in terms of programmes of study at the Manchester College. So as Ellie mentioned, we are a technical and vocational college, so we focus on getting our students work ready. So yes, we do all the theory side of things and you get your qualification, um, but we are a very, very hands on college. So if you are one of those learners who likes to learn by doing, then you know one of our courses might fit you best. We've got lots and lots of study programmes on offer at Manchester College from animal care to sport, to criminology, health and social care. And you'll see the range on the next slide. Um, but yeah, lots of these are in T-levels, but we've also got, as Ellie mentioned before, the vocational study programmes. And the main difference there is that the T-levels are slightly more academic than a vocational study programme. And that's why the entry requirements are slightly higher as they focus more on, you know, the English and math side of things, um, but also that extended work placement. Our vocational study programmes we have from entry level all the way up to level three and um, so depending on your GCSE grades but also depending on the area you're going into will determine which level you start at. So for example our automotive students, students might come in with nines across the board you know a really good grade profile but they've never been under the hood of a car before, they've never seen an engine before so those students will need to start at a lower level and that's no representation on their skills or their knowledge or their ability. It's just because it wouldn't be safe to put them straight onto a level three. So, you know, don't be disheartened if you do have to start on a lower level. As Ellie mentioned, we also offer apprenticeships and degree programmes um, and thereby our partners, Total People and Youth and Manchester. So, you know, you can take lots and lots of different pathways here at the college. Next slide, please, Caroline. So just a few more did you knows about us. Um, so as I mentioned, number one college in Greater Manchester for Achievement, that does put us in one of the top 20 colleges nationally for achievement. So something we are really proud of. And as we talked quite a bit throughout this presentation, we do like to get students ready for their careers and not just give them a great qualification. So we do work with a range of employers for our students to build their employability skills. Um, and when we've done some surveys in the past, nine out of 10 of our employers do tell us our students are ready for that workplace. And we have helped over 12,000 students this past year as well achieve that qualification. But don't worry about that figure. As I say, we have six campuses. We don't have 12,000 students at one campus. campus that are spread across Greater Manchester. So as I say, every campus has, does have that different feel. And I've always spoken to you as well about that investment. We are investing that £140 million into a brand new city centre campus and a redevelopment. I'm going to move on to the next slide, Caroline, and clean understand we are running out of time. I'll do this one for you, Megan. Um, so this is the study programmes that Megan did mention earlier on. Uh, we do offer a wide range. So if you are interested in any of the areas, um, do come and listen to our chat. I believe it's Wednesday um, for our FE Choices um, week when we talk about our vocation study programmes. Um, so we will go into more detail on that day about the courses that we do offer. Can we move on to the next slide, Caroline? And I'll pass you back over to Megan. 
Amazing. So hopefully you've got more of an understanding and insight to T levels and also us as the Manchester College. If you are interested in applying to the Manchester College, like Caroline mentioned before, you might still be undecided on what you want to do and just looking for more information. Please head to our website and um, that's tmc.ac.uk. There you can find all of the courses that we have on offer and um, a lot of information about the entry requirements, what your next steps can be and also a little bit about you know what you'll learn on the course. If you are interested in applying, you can apply via our website. We don't take any paper applications, so you just need to click on the apply now button and it'll ask you to make an account. That's just where you'll need to pop in your email address um, and put in all your information. Then you will receive a conditional offer. It's really, really important that you, when you receive your offer, you do accept that as soon as possible. Um, and then you'll be able to book in a telephone interview with one of our tutors who will just make sure that you are on the right course. And then in July, you will be invited into our new student welcome day, which we are all extremely excited about. Um, obviously, we've not seen a lot of you guys this year due to the pandemic, so we can't wait to welcome some students onto campus. Um, if you do want any more information, you can contact us at the School Liaison Team. That's on slt at tmc.ac.uk. Um, but yeah, I think we're out of time, Caroline, so I'll pass it back over to you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Great, thanks to both of you. That was a, a really quick overview and well managed in terms of the time to everything to do uh, with T-Levels. So thanks to both Megan and um, Ellie for joining us this morning and they will be back um, throughout the week to talk about some of the different pathways that are available at the Manchester College. Um, next we're going to come to um, Saqib who's going to talk to us a little bit um, about some of the uh, pathways available at Stockport College and Trafford College. So I'll switch you across now Saqib, thank you. Thank you, Caroline. My name uh, is Saqib and I'm the programme leader for academic studies at the Trafford College. Under academic studies, um, we have both A-levels and we have uh, a full-time GCC programme as well, which we've been running for the past uh, five years. Myself, I've been at the college for about 10 years now. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit today about uh, the A-levels. Uh, next slide, please, Caroline. Uh, and the next one, please. Um, so um, I'm based uh, at our Trafford uh, campus in Altrincham and our Stockport campus uh, as well. Uh, the Trafford campus, we have a, a dedicated sixth form which houses the A-level programme and the GCSE programme. Um, so at the moment you might be you know, at 16, it's very hard to know what you want to do for the rest of your life. Um, but the advantages with the A-levels, it gives you a lot of flexibility. So uh, whereas a BTEC, you might specialise in one particular area. So you might decide you need know, to do BTEC in uh, hair and beauty or BTEC in science or BTEC in engineering. Uh, and, and you're almost um, possibly limited to those pathways. But with the A-levels, you can have a little bit more flexibility um, as to what you want to do. So you could do, you know, business, law and maths. Um, and that gives you some flexibility when you decide um, on what you want to do at university. Um, uh, A-levels are a great option for people who do want to go to university. Um, and like I said, they give you that flexibility. Um, you know, if you've got a real passion for studying, uh, if you really you know, have a love for reading um, and, and independent work, then A-levels would be a great choice um, for yourself. What I would say about A-levels is, you know, choose, you know, when you're choosing your A-levels, ask yourself, you know, um, do I enjoy these subjects and are these my in my top three subjects at school? Um, there may be subjects that you may not have studied at school, for example, law. Um, um, so then you may want to speak to our tutors and think about what kind of skills um, that you would pick up with GCC are transferable over to a subject like law. So you know, there's a lot of essay writing, so what you've got at English. Um, if you want to do something like psychology, which you might not have done at GCC, um, again, that's quite science and quite maths based. Um, so, so something to worth thinking about. Um, the Worth remembering that the A-levels, um, if you've got older brothers and sisters, they might have done it under the old system where it was all modular. It's now all linear. So your exams will be at the end of the two years. So what, one thing to bear in mind is that are you good at exams? Um, and, and, and do you, you, know, you will have to see through the full two years um, and, and, and you'll be examined on everything that you've done in all three subjects. Um, so students will typically do three A-levels. OK. Uh, next slide, please, Caroline. Um, so uh, within our uh, 
at our Altrium campus, um, these are some of the courses that we have available. So um, depending on where you are, uh, or what you enjoy, um, it might be something very arts based um, or humanities based. Um, or you might be more of a science student. Um, we've got a couple of new, uh, a new subject added uh, over the last year, criminology, which has been a real big uptake in that, which is equivalent to one A level, um, and um, uh, amongst various other things, which you can see um, up there. Um, next slide, please, Caroline. Okay, so. Why would you choose uh, the Sixth Form Centre or Trafford College uh, for that matter? Um, what I would say was that student, the, the teachers here, their, their main focus is uh, A-level. So um, unlike in a school where uh, you know, they might have some, uh, you know, a little bit of A-level timetable, our teachers just have A-levels on their timetable. It's what they do. Um, you know, many teachers have been here for several years, um, so they know the spec inside out and they're very experienced at what they do. Um, now with uh, you're probably all used to um, uh, learning um, a hybrid model of online, so we can accommodate uh, that when necessary as well. Uh, we've got dedicated science labs and really up to date classrooms and a really modernized building and there's a real nice campus feel um, if you come to Trafford College. Uh, next slide please Caroline. OK. Um, so these are um, some our past students um, and, and some of the results they've got. So we get some really great results here at Trafford College. Um, like I said, we also run the um, uh, the GCSE uh, program as well here. And through that program, we have a number of students who have uh, come through a lot of overseas students. They've really strengthened uh, our cohort on the A level program. Um, so you know, lots of um, uh, a great variety of, of, of really good students have gone on some great things, um, you know, from things like medicine uh, to architecture um, to journalism to law, criminology. Uh, we get a whole range um, at some very good universities as well. They've gone on to. Thank you. OK, so what are the entry requirements for the a level program. So we require students to have at least five GCSEs uh, that must be at grade five or above, uh, including maths and English. Um, and the reason for that is because um, they are demanding. So we're, that's why we have these entry requirements in place. Um, for the maths and science, um, again, there's a lot of extra work required for those subjects um, and, th and they are um, somewhat demanding and challenging. They are doable, but because of that, we have those uh, slightly higher entry requirement in place for the maths and science, uh, which is a good uh, grade six profile um, in, in, uh, across um, your sciences and your maths. Um, you might have done double science, uh, and that's fine. Uh, there's no requirement to do separate science. You know, no disadvantage if you did double science, if you want the science and the maths, but we do require two sixes. Um, and if you want, if you're doing separate sciences, then we need a six and at least two of the separate sciences. So six in uh, your uh, physics and a six in your chemistry, if you want to go on to do physics and chemistry A-level. Um, and if you want to do something like physics, then we ask that you do the A-level maths alongside it as well. If you don't get the entry requirements, um, then, uh, as I said, we do also run a GCSE program um, for students that maybe um, you're just short of the five um, and you really want to do A-levels and you've got threes and fours, then it's realistic to be able to go up in the space here. The GCSE program is one year course or maybe you've just arrived in the country. Um, I'd say about 40 to 50 percent of our students on the GCSE program uh, have come from overseas or they've just joined year 11. Um, uh, and so they probably haven't got the full um, or they probably need a little bit longer um, to spend on their studies um, or maybe you've just arrived in the country and you don't have those GCSE qualifications. Um, so we offer that uh, programme as well um, at our Altrinum and our Stockport campus is the GCSE programme. Um, and like I said, quite a number of students from the GCSE programme have gone on to the A-level programme. Um, um, a lot of overseas students and it's really strengthened our uh, A-level cohort. Next slide please Caroline. Okay, um, so uh, 
if you decide to do A-levels with us, um, you will have in your first year a week dedicated to work experience. Uh, and the reason why we do this, one, not only is it a, a government expectation, but two, um, it will also help really strengthen your uh, UCAS applications when you apply for university. Uh, particularly, you know, if you're interested in a particular area, for example, say um, medicine or dentistry, if you've done a work experience within, uh, say, a GP practice or a dental practice, um, then that gives you something to work, uh, write about on your UCAS. It also um, uh, allows you to figure out is you know is this something that I really like maybe you go on those practices and you actually realize actually I'm a bit too squeamish to uh, look inside people's mouths and blood and guts all day um, and you might decide actually I want to do something else um, so we have uh, a, a week worth of work experience on top of that we also have work related learning days um, so um, two or three times a year we'll have guest speakers come in uh, from various different um, uh, uh, career areas, um, medicine, law, um, dentistry, engineering, um, journalism, and some various university speakers in as well um, that, that, that can give you a little bit more insight into those careers. Thank you. Next slide, please. OK, so what will your timetable look like? Uh, if you decide to study A-levels, so students all study three A-levels. Um, we, we, we student, uh, students often ask, can we do four? Um, it's, it, universities only ask for three, so that's why you have students uh, doing three. And, and maybe in an exceptional case, um, a student might do four, but on the whole, uh, all students will study three A levels. Um, you have five hours per week of each subject, so you'll do a morning and afternoon. So it'll be slightly longer than what you're used to uh, in school because lessons will end up being a, a couple of hours or so, two and a half hours. Um, but it does give you time to do quite a lot, uh, particularly if you're doing things like science and you have, you know, a whole morning where you can fit in a practical and theory work. Um, and, and, and there's a lot of um, opportunity there, a lot of scope to do a lot of different things and activities um, that, that you, where you don't have those kind of time constraints uh, that you would do in, say, school. Um, then um, you also have a tutorial on top of that, um, which will be um, an extra couple of hours a week. So it equates to about 17 or 18 hours a week. Um, you will still get homework as well. Um, and where you don't have homework, we do expect to do a little bit more independent um, and, and, and do your own um, uh independent study as well on top of that. Uh, next slide, please. OK, um, likewise, you are left uh, to your own devices a little bit. You're not completely under the thumb as you would be in, say, school, um, but we do still have high expectations of attendance, punctuality, um, attitude and behaviour. I'd say by the time you get to college, there are no behaviour issues. Everyone is uh, um, very focused on their studies. Uh, make sure you participate in lessons and work to the best of your ability um, as well. Thank you. Next slide, please, Caroline. OK, um, so as well as your tutors, uh, we also have um, uh, pro progress uh, support mentors. Um, so maybe so they will monitor um, anything that won't be academic. So you have your own personal tutor um, who will look at um, your own um, uh, uh, academic uh, progress, but you also have a past. You may also have a pastoral support mentor. So you know if you're struggling with things like um, you know waking up on time, or maybe you have some anxiety, or or, or various other things, um, uh, you know, irregular sleeping patterns, then your pastoral support mentor can help with, with that and, and and help get you into a routine as well. Um, thank you. Next slide, please, Caroline. OK, um, so um, what I would say as well with Trafford College is that we have um, a dedicated student support service um, that you might not find in a, in a school. So that is their job. When we have a careers team that their job is just to look at careers. Um, you are updated regularly. So um, so whilst you will get some independence, you still do have parents evenings. You still get uh, reports home. So parents are still in the loop. Um, but um, uh, we, we also do um, give you a little bit of flexibility as well. Thank you. Next slide, please, Caroline. 
Uh, okay. Um, so um, as well as studying hard, you also get to play hard. So again, we have a dedicated sports department. So if you're interested in sports, you can do that. We have Duke at Edinburgh. Um, we have quite a lot of trips uh, throughout the year. In a normal year, we would do so hopefully by the time you come back in 2021, um, we'll be able to start um, doing those again. You've got a lot of li liaisons with the Manchester University and the local universities, uh, well, uh, particularly with the science as well. We have things like spectroscopy days um, and so on and so forth. Uh, next slide, please. OK, um, so uh, just to finish off, you know, Trafford College uh, is a very good halfway house between um, university uh, and, and school and employment. Um, there's a real nice campus feel to, um, to, to, to Trafford College if you come around, um, you know, if you've um, been in a school and maybe you want a fresh start, you don't want to sixth form, um, you know, everybody here is new and, and everybody's treated equally and, and you know, we don't know you from uh, from your past or, you know, maybe you've had a bit of an up and down history at school and you want to come for a fresh start. That's also great. Um, you know, um, feedback is really good. Students go on some really good things uh, and we have some really dedicated hard work in students here. Um, so that's uh, it from me with A-levels. And I'll hand it back to Caroline, please. Um, just to say, if you want to apply, then please go to the website and um, we will then call you in uh, for an online interview. Um, if you miss the deadline for application, we are still taking people uh, as late as August. So uh, please come and join us at enrollment. Thank you. Great, thanks very much Saqib. Uh, we're running a little bit behind schedule, so I'm going to jump straight away over to Lisa, who's going to fill us in all about um, A-levels in a very whistle-stop tour. Thanks, Lisa. Hi, so my name is Lisa Radcliffe and I'm the Head of Health and Childcare Education at Trafford College Group. So I'm going to talk about T-levels. So if you could go through my slide, please, headline. OK, next one. Thank you. So there is a video, but obviously if we're pushed for time, then please do go onto the website to have a look at the video. I'll just talk you through what our offer is from the group's perspective. So from September, we're going to run childcare and education, which falls under myself, digital support services and construction. So we have campuses we have three, well, we have five now. We Obviously, we've merged with Cheadle and Marple, and we have Stockport Campus, Altrincham Campus, and Stretford Campus. So these are taken over Altrincham, Stretford, Stretford, and Stockport Campus. Okay, next slide, please. So the structure of a T-level, if we talk about the core theory aspects and concepts and skills for an industry area, they're embodied within the full programme of the T-level over the two years and specialist skills and knowledge for an occupation or career. So you will have lecturers, very like Saqib said about A-levels within our group, you will have lecturers who are passionate about the industry and are actually still working in the industry. So some of my lecturers for childcare and education own nurseries, they are, one of them is a mental health practitioner for children and they come in and they, they will teach on the programme. So you have a real host of knowledge and experience. And as everybody said about T levels, we have a minimum standard or our entry requirements for grade four in maths and English. Next slide, please. <coughs> Excuse me. So equivalent to three A levels, a T level focuses on vocational skills and can help our students into skilled employment, higher studies or apprenticeships. So myself, I can talk about childcare and education, but I know of the three heads of those areas in way to provide us have co-designed and developed with our employers actually what we can do extra. extra. So T-Levels is, is our curriculum, but we can add qualifications as we go along so we can bolt them on. So 
In terms of our qualifications that we can add on throughout the two years are paediatric first aid, neuroscience in children, and we have a renowned neuroscience Minet Combayer who is going to teach that specific unit here. And she was absolutely instrumental in setting up the T-levels through NCFE Cash, so who actually won the qualification. So again, really, really high illustrious lecturers teaching you. Thank you, Caroline. Again, so our placements in childcare, it's not unheard of to do over 700 hours and it's a requirement to do a level three, but we would do a little bit more. So 45 days within your placement setting. We actually have a link employer. So our link employer for T-levels is Traffic Council. So we will have, you'll have a whole host of placement opportunities from nursery settings, primary schools, CAMs working with children who are disadvantaged, disengaged, and a whole host of other caveats that lie within children's service in Trafford Council. So that's our childcare and education T level. Within construction, we've got a new site being rebuilt. So stock, our Stockport campus has been rebuilt and we work with construction developers and you get hands on experience. You actually see the building growing before your eyes as you, within your theoretical. It makes it such a holistic programme. OK, next slide, please. 80% um, classroom and 20% of learners spend in, you know, in work. So in terms of the skills employers need, we have an amazing reputation in terms of working with employers and engaging employers, working with GM, working with Trapper Council, working within our whole host of Stockport NHS Trust. So we do know what the local and regional need is and we're trying to fill that gap to make sure that we are a career ready programme. So we're really important it's really important your academic success on the program but it's equally as important to me and to the group that you actually go out into your chosen destination in your chosen career pathway be that he and we work with sheffield hallam with a child care and education degree that you can actually study within our he department so you wouldn't have to go elsewhere to university you could do it right the way throughout okay perfect thank you Caroline. And in terms of UCAS, if you do want to go on to HE, then you need to accrue your UCAS points. So there's just a little basic overview for a distinction star is 168 points, distinction 144, a merit 120 and a pass 96. So you are able to see at this stage, if you want to go into primary school teaching, what you need to do. So where, what HEI, what university you want to go to, how many points do they actually want? So you're able to actually represent and go across those. Thank you, Caroline. OK, so just on the back of the FE skills white paper is, and as been already mentioned, from 2023, 24 T levels will be covering 11 technical education routes and that will be available to all learners. With the, the thought behind it being an A level, a T level or an apprenticeship and T level sort of maps both. So T levels will be the option of choice for 16 to 19 who want to progress into skilled employment. Again, as I said, if you want to go into employment or an advanced higher apprenticeship or you want to go to HA. So for T levels, I feel the employer involvement on it has, has just been imperative. So involved in setting the content and thousands more will be offering industry placements to young people as I feel T levels will become embedded as the mainstream technical offer. We do offer level three, we do offer level two in different, not in the T level pathway, so you are still able to do both. OK, next page. Perfect, thank you. I'm sorry that was rushed. I'm sorry that was a whistle stop tour. Thank you very much. Please do look at the video. It's on our website and we, we are open for applications. Thanks, Caroline. Thanks very much, Lisa, and sorry we had to cut you a little bit short running over um, the line this morning. We've just got so much to get through, uh, but that was a really good coverage of everything. And as Lisa said, everything is either on the Stockport Jobs Match, including the T-Levels video, or you can find that um, on the um, college websites as well. Um, next this morning, we're going to come to um, John at Aquinas, um, who's going to tell us um, a little bit more um, about their offer. Um, and um, give us a nice overview into um, the entry requirements um, for A-levels and C-levels. Good morning, Caroline. Can you hear me? Yep. 
Super. Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here and just to share a little bit about the college and also talk about entry requirements and also enrichment programmes that the college offers. Um, so my name is John Morrison. I'm part of the careers team at Aquinas College. Um, if you're not sure where we're based, we're just off the A6 on a road called Nangrieve Road, which is um, just based in Stockport near the centre. Um, next slide, please, Caroline. And that's a, uh, a picture of our building there. So we've still got quite a nice little modern building. Um, I want to talk about five sort of main features of the college and um, talk about the fact that we've got a diverse student population coming from different parts of Manchester, Stockport. Uh, there's people coming from Macclesfield and Buxton. So people get here on a train journey. Um, so there's uh, lots of different types of people who do um, their courses. We offer a range of uh, academic and vocational courses, which I'll come on to a little bit later. We do have an action packed enrichment programme and despite obviously certain um, restrictions this year, we've still been managing to do them. And then um, coming in this academic year, there'll be lots more open uh, available. Alongside, we have a strong pastoral support. So uh, every student will get a uh, will be part of a tutor group, uh, and they'll get a, a a group tutor who supports them through their development, their their skills, and their preferences for next year. Uh, and we do support with your future aspirations. So if you wanted to go to university, uh, wanted to try and get an apprenticeship or degree apprenticeship, there's lots going on. We've got support. I'm part of a careers team, so um, those are sort of main features. So next slide, please, Caroline. So, of course, this is just a snapshot, but I'd, I'd wholly recommend going to our Aquinas website for more information so you can get that sort of details as to what the college is more about and the courses. Um, becoming an Aquinas student is, is much more than simply choosing uh, what you want to do uh, after high school. It's been part of our wider community uh, with Catholic College. Um, and what we say to students is um, the more you put in, the more you get out. So, uh, again, please use our website. As a college, we're committing to caring for each student. Uh, you will find support available, but we will help you to develop skills to uh, make you more employable in the future, to get those grades needed for your next steps. Uh, so we do challenge uh, at the appropriate uh, level as well. We've got high expectations, so we do expect people to study and work here. Um, the, we believe that each student is the very possible support to reach your potential so we do have lots of different environments and atmospheres to ensure that happens uh, and that means that the students then uh, work hard and then the exam results will follow and that's not a surprise um, so at the moment either if you're in year 11 then you're probably facing some uh, difficult decisions coming up so uh, please do uh, get in touch with us and use the website um, if you're in year 10 then you will be starting to hopefully think about this so um, please prepare to work hard to aim high if you aspire to be more than Aquinas College is definitely the college to consider and definitely a place I would recommend for you. Um, so this is just a, a snapshot really of our study programmes that you could do. So um, predominantly um, two year course is what students uh, tend to do and that's uh, we offer a programme of A-levels and BTEC qualifications and depending on what you want to do in the future, uh, you can either do all three which are A-levels or perhaps mix and match. You could even do all three courses uh, which are BTEC subjects. Um, so these are the ones which you've chosen to study. Um, so that could either be preparing you to develop skills for the academic uh, rigors of university or if you want to progress on to an apprenticeship. Uh, these are also skills which can be transferred if you are not quite sure yet and you want to keep your options open, that's perfectly fine. If you need to, we offer one year courses which are um, level two, which are GCSEs uh, and other similar qualifications to broaden your education um, uh, qualifications. Uh, and you could take them either alongside your two-year courses or it could work towards uh, completing those two-year courses. As I mentioned, we've got a strong pastoral programmes, so uh, alongside your courses, you'll be uh, involved in weekly tutorial sessions with other students, assemblies to get important information and news, what's going on in the college and outside, uh, and you also study uh, religious studies uh, additionally, um, and that's a great way to explore uh, and reflect on uh, key questions, key ethical situations, and again, to develop not just your academic skills, but your also personal skills as well. 
Uh, alongside uh, those as well, we offer, as I said, a programme of activities that you could do to either enhance your experience at Aquinas, to give back, to make new friends, but also to develop key skills which could be used for when you're applying for university uh, apprenticeships or your next steps. Uh, next, please. So this is a, a, a snapshot again of, of the courses we offer and there's quite a, a variety, quite a mixture. I think what you need to just be aware of is um, for the entry requirements, it's six GCSEs, uh, a grade four to include both an English language uh, and maths and that keeps your uh, options open in terms of what you could do. Uh, again, the advice is to go on the website because we've got uh, individual requirements for different courses. So if, for example, you want to study psychology, uh, A-level um, uh, requirements college, you need a grade six in English language GCSE and grade fives in maths and science. Alternatively, if you want to study uh, A-level law, grade five uh, is needed in English or history GCSEs. For BTEX, um, again, it goes back to what you, know, you need entry requirements wise, and it's more ideally five GCSEs at grade four, including English uh, language and maths. So please do check the website for all those different types because it's just to ensure that you're um, making sure that you're going to be successful in those courses. So please use that website. So uh, next slide, please. So what do our students think? So we asked students what was their experience of the college so far and what kind of advice they could give uh, to year 10s and year 11s. So these are sort of uh, answers they provided. So what you enjoyed about the college, what the students have said is meeting new people, learning new subjects. So there's a whole range of different courses you could do, which you may not be able to do at high school at the moment. So that's a great feature. Uh, the inclusivity the support and range of things to get involved with. So as I mentioned, um, we do encourage students to uh, to be more, to improve either skills, experience, or just to do something new uh, alongside courses, get involved in our enrichment programmes. Uh, teachers are lovely and there's always support available when you need it and that is definitely true. You can talk to any member of staff about anything and then we can either signpost you to the right sort of person and get uh, either support or, or just advice that you need. The friendly environment and atmosphere is what another student mentioned and also gaining some independence uh, and more responsibility in my education. That's very important. It's more about taking control, making decisions to help uh, with your next steps after after your college studies. We also asked uh, what sort of uh, good features of the college and I do highly recommend when we can uh, to uh, come and visit the college and in fact we will have some open events uh, in September if you're in year 10. Uh, when you're in year 11 you can um, uh, come into the college and see the environment, see what you could do. Uh, but good features include, um, this student mentioned that the courses are interesting, so BTEC Media Production uh, is enjoyable when making uh, documentaries, adverts and music videos. So under the guidance of your teachers who are very specialist them in those areas and they've supported students in the past. You can do lots of different uh, insights and skills which can be used in the future. Um, so uh, yes, um, we do have a, a PE which is separate, which means that we've got more grounds there. So we've got uh, amazing outdoor facilities, we've got a massive astro surfer if you're interested in five side, we've got tennis courts, uh, indoors basketball. So we do have the PE building separate, but everything else is located in one building, so it's quite accessible uh, and it's a real sense of community atmosphere as well. Yeah, and that's great. So modern facilities, high quality equipment and building. Uh, teacher support, so um, teachers are providing uh, feedback and ways to develop and improve um, for each of your courses. And uh, as the uh, final student there says, we've got private study areas and that helped them tremendously to ensure that they've got a, a focus in their in their course studies. Uh, we also asked students what the, what enrichment they participated in through college. Uh, I'll give a list uh, shortly after that, but these are sort of uh, things despite the impact of, of what's going on recently. They've been able to get involved in opportunities to, to better themselves and develop skills. So we've got a whole range there from creative writing, basketball. Uh, we do have something called the Student Union, which is a council and they are a collection of students that uh, better the students experience and work with uh, appropriate senior members of staff like the vice principal. So there's quite a lot going on there. Our AAA programme is, is a new programme, but it's basically to help uh, students uh, aspire and achieve whilst at Aquinas College. Um, so that's a, like a stretch and challenge program and this student also tried learning Mandarin so uh, we do have new and exciting opportunities uh, throughout um, the college time. 
Other students have participated in our famous uh, India project where we raise money for a charity in Mumbai for orphans and even go in uh, to India if, if, we're, if we can. Um, sign language, community ambassadors. We also have um, from the careers department ourselves, university webinars and lectures. Um, if you're interested in law, mock, uh, mock trials can help develop your skills into that. Duke of Edinburgh Awards, Netball, Smart Engineers Programme and Aquinas Citizens if you're interested in your politics and to try and I guess work out what's going on and to help better uh, prepare yourself for, for making important citizenship uh, decisions. So what advice would they give to Year 10 11 students? These are sort of um, issues and advice that they sort of recommend. So be prepared to work outside your college hours to ensure you understand lesson content and that's very important to make sure that you can take in the lesson uh, information. Pick what subjects you like, not just what your friend is considering. That's very important because it is ultimately your decisions and it's your future choices. So choose subjects you enjoy, have interest in because it uh, makes it easy when doing work. And if you're not sure how to make choices, that's completely fine. And as part of the careers team and uh, we have a, a big advice and guidance team that can help support you with that right from now up until you enroll or when you get your results in August uh, in a couple of years time. Get involved in anything on offer that you like the sound of enjoy your time because it goes by so quick so enjoy yourself and reiterating it you get out what you put in the harder you try on your subjects the better you do and don't hesitate you have to ask your teachers for help whether that's in lesson or not so finally this is the last sort of thing we ask students to sort of sum up the college in one or three words real community spirit feels like home a space for growth peaceful fun caring motivating freedom exciting I'll just leave you saying the best years ever and that's what we strive for helping you uh, to your next steps as well. So this is more of as to what you could do in terms of enrichment programs and other colleges could also do similar things so I mentioned the student union there yeah, they're uh, a bunch of students that help represent your views and improve your uh, college experience uh, you can also develop skills and also uh, it's it's a fun sort of thing to organise events activities throughout the year, including our talent shows. We do like an Aquinas festival with music and all sorts going on. And then finally, just to celebrate your time here, we do a Leavers Ball. So you can also participate in representing the college uh, with the student uh, subject programmes through the ambassadors uh, links and the programmes we offer. And that develops practical skills. And again, it's a great thing to put in your CV and make new friends. Uh, next slide, please. Looks unfortunately like some of the letters may be a bit blurring, but we offer sort of like four different categories. So I have a enrichment programs in terms of different sport opportunities, and that ranges from football. We've got some very competitive um, teams that you can get involved with: girls football, basketball. Again, that's um, uh, male and females. Um, we also do uh, things like rugby, climbing, uh, and we also encourage students if they've got an interest, you can maybe create your own enrichment program. So challenge yourself. There's a few new ones there that we we didn't have a few years ago, um, and that can range from Duke of uh, Edinburgh Award to Dungeons and Dragons. So it really is something for everyone. Arts and culture as well. If you're interested, in maybe Japanese culture. There's something for you there. Chess club and um, to develop your career skills as a careers ready program. And then trips and travel. We have to arrange it through the uh, uh, courses that you may do, but also uh, all students could be invited to. So we've been to New York. We've been to uh, things like French exchange. We've got our famous India trip where you can go to Mumbai and you can see and develop and uh, help support orphans uh, in uh, the uh, orphanage that we, we uh, are linked with. So there's lots going on. There's lots you can choose from. I and mean, all you have to do is ask the member of staff and you can get you put forward to the right person. Uh, next slide, please, Carolyn. Um, conscious of time, so just to sort of start to wrap it up, um, as I'm part of the careers team, we help in uh, ensure that you're going to develop um, so whatever you want to do. We can keep options open, look at universities, apprenticeships, we get you prepared for it. We have a series of talks, resources, lots of things going on in the college during your two years here. Uh, next slide, please. So here's just some examples of some of our students. So uh, Emily uh, left a few years ago now, but uh, progressed on to going to university and now is assistant merchandiser at um, TK Maxx uh, and their wider global um, companies that they, they organise. Uh, Caitlin, Caitlin um, could have gone to university, decided actually I wanted to uh, go into a degree apprenticeship. So she's currently working as an apprentice scientist technician at AstraZeneca. So she's quite a heart what's going on. 
Alex, Alex left a few years ago as well, and he went on to a competitive journalism uh, course, which he's now uh, into uh, management at a media uh, local company in Manchester. And finally, last slide, please. Uh, Caitlin, Caitlin wanted to study law at university, but then she developed her skills and awareness of what's going on with um, legal apprenticeships. And she now works as a solicitor apprentice at a big law firm, Adelsio Goddard, uh, and she's doing fantastically well as well. So there's lots of our wider communities doing. So just to sum up, and I'm just slightly off of time, but um, which combination course is right for me? So think about the entry requirements, check on our, uh, our website for individual subject areas, same with other colleges and, uh, and uh, FE choices. Uh, think about what's suitable, what you're going to enjoy. Have you got any career ideas at the moment? Could that improve your progressing into those areas? You basically want to ensure that two years are going to go well, that you're going to enjoy yourself during those sort of questions. Uh, and so I think I've got the final slide there, Caroline, just slightly off in a minute, but hopefully that's fine. Um, so thank you for listening to me. If um, you're in year 11 and if you've been offered a place already at Aquinas College, you should have received an invite already to our welcome day. So we can brilliant, uh, we can welcome students into college either on the 7th or 8th of July. If you haven't, please get in touch with the college as soon as possible. But if you need any more information, those are the sort of details that we offer over on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, and please. Uh, we hope to see you soon. Thanks very much. Great. Great. Thanks, Thanks for having me, John. Oh, oh, I'm getting some feedback there. there. There we go, perfect. Um, and thanks very much. Real, real whistle stops whistle. all of everything there. Um, sorry, if you're not presenting, if you could just um, switch your mic off so that feedback's not there, that's fab. Um, really good overview as to um, everything at Aquinas. So be sure to check out their, their website and some of those dates that are coming up in the diary to find out more. Um, next, we're going to be switching um, to Stephen to tell us a little bit more about how to transition from secondary school um, to college and campus life. And he's joining us um, from Severia college. Uh, Over to you Stephen. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, my name is Stephen Hall. I'm Head of Admissions over at Sedarian College and, and uh, in a usual year I'll be going out to a number of different high schools across Stockport, across all of Manchester to, uh, to talk a little bit about Sedarian College but also to try and give a little bit of information to students about the differences between high school and college. Um, I will try and keep it as general as I can, so uh, a number of the things that I'll say will be um, relevant for whichever colleges you're looking to apply to, but obviously some of that will be filtered through a Zavarian lens as well, so I hope you bear with me in that regard. And um, yeah, we've got uh, a number of differences, I suppose, between high school and, and college, and at Zavarian we feel that, uh, I think, as much as anywhere else. One of the, um, one of the, the key things there is a number of, uh, every student that comes to college, sorry, will have a specific set of courses that is just for them. And that's a huge thing. It means that what you're studying, what you're thinking about has been chosen by you. And um, we know that that makes students feel really engaged with what they're studying, but it also makes them feel a little bit more grown up because they have made that decision for themselves. They're not necessarily having to take core subjects that have been introduced by um, by teachers or, or encouraged to do things by, by their family. You can pick those subjects for yourself. At Severian, we don't have a school uniform. We have a, uh, a very, very open attitude to what students come to school and what they come to college in. It's whatever they feel comfortable in. And again, that, that leads to that idea of, of independence. Everyone's got their own timetable, which is, is a big difference from school in terms of uh, your lessons might fall at certain points in the day, meaning that you've got independent study periods in a morning, in an afternoon, and our students love that. It means they can plan their day accordingly. And that might mean that if you've got lessons just in the morning on one day, that you use our library, you use one of our study spaces, you take part in enrichment or additional subject support, or it might be if you're traveling a long way to get to the college, that you go home and work at home. And there's a real flexibility with that. And all of these things are, are put together so that students are working exceptionally hard. Severian's an outstanding academic sixth form uh, where students are looking to go to the top universities in the country. 
but we also want students to feel that they are growing as young people so that when they leave us they're ready for university or work or the wider world where you will have to have a lot more autonomy about managing your time and the, the reading and the research that you need to do for your university degree. Another thing that's that's massively different for a number of colleges, but I think Severian as much as anyone is, we have a campus layout and that will feel very, very different to high school. If you get the chance to come and have a look around our college, um, and I do encourage you to look around all of the different colleges that you're considering if you're in year 10 or, or below. And um, if you have a look around Severian, you'll see that subjects are taught in different buildings for different subject areas. And you might have one building that's just for art subjects. You might have another one that's just for just for English, another one that's just for sciences. And you might move between those, those buildings. But the campus feel of the place means that students, again, are feeling like they've taken a step up from high school. We've got some exceptional high schools in, in Stockport and Greater Manchester, and they're doing fantastic work with students, but it will feel a little bit different when you go to college. With ourselves, you can see there, you're welcome to leave the campus if you don't have lessons or at lunchtime. And that's something I'll touch upon in a, in a, in a, in a moment as well about the location of, of colleges might be something that you want to think about when you're picking where to go. Um, and uh, it's a really exciting time more than anything else. I really recommend, and that's going to be a recurring theme over the next um, five, ten minutes, really recommend, do your research. I, I know John from, from Aquinas has just said there, get on their website. Um, Loretto, Stockport, Trafford, Manchester, all the colleges that, that you hear from, um, over the next uh, few days and, and next few minutes, go and research what they are about on their on their website. Have a look on their prospectus, but also when you get the chance, go and visit them, see how the place feels, because that will give you the the biggest indication of how um, how different things are going to be there for you. And we do a lot of stuff to make sure that the transition is not too much of a culture shock, um, and that's something I'll touch about uh, touch upon as well. But I think we'll go on to the next slide now. Um, a couple of facts about Severian specifically, uh, we're a sixth form college, that means that we uh, we only have students who are sort of 16 to 19. Most of our students join us age 16, straight from year 11. The majority of our students are doing A-levels, some of them are doing vocational courses such as BTECs. We don't have any T-levels at the moment, we don't have any apprenticeships, and it's a place for students who are excited to continue their academic studies. And we are in Russia, so we're two miles south of the city centre. And um, we've also recently gone into partnership with the Manchester Giants Basketball Academy. So if you're a basketballer, that might be a really exciting thing for you. Um, but if we move on to the, to the next slide, um, uh, the, the location of Severian is something that students uh, might want to have a think about. And we'll move on again. Uh, if we go on to the next slide. Thank you there. So, oh, sorry, if we just skip back to the to the location of today, and we're two miles south of the city centre, as I say, and you might think that's not the closest college to me, that's not on, on my doorstep. But these are the things you have to think about when you're picking your college. We might have students just round the corner from us who live in Rochelle, who think there's another college out there that's more suited to their, to their interests, to their needs. Um, equally, we've had students travel to us from from Macclesfield, from Lynn, from Bolton, Berry. We've had some students commute to us from West Yorkshire. So that's something to look about. Can you get there? A lot of students go to high school at schools that are relatively close to them, or, or they can get there within maybe half an hour, 40 minutes on a bus. And um, our transport links are fantastic. You can travel down, uh, you can travel to us from buses right the way across the city. But we're really accessible because you can get trains into Manchester, Piccadilly or Oxford Road and quickly get a bus down to right outside the campus, which is why students travel from far and wide. Um, but as you are growing up, as you are becoming a little bit older, you might be interested in the, the cultural capital uh, that is Manchester there with, with all the additional things that you can go out and, and view as you become a, a, a more um, an older student, as it were, and we'll, we'll progress again. This is something that you might want to have a think about um, when you are looking at colleges and looking what, about where to transition to from high school, but it's not the most important thing by any means. Um, as I say, we're an outstanding 6-1 college, you've got some fantastic options right the way across the city, 
But more important is finding the place that's right for you, that offers the right courses, that has the right atmosphere, where you feel I'm going to be at home. Because the other thing about choosing a college is your parents might have been very involved in that process for primary and, and even secondary in association with the local council. You can do a lot of the research yourself. So find a place that's best for you and meets your needs, I would say, and will progress. <coughs> Um, you can have a look at the different colleges' uh, academic performance over recent years. It's skewed, obviously, a little bit this year and last year because of the way that grades have been awarded, but we've had a fantastic track record of, of success in terms of our A-level results. Um, we've had exceptional, uh, high-achieving students come to Zavarian who are um, looking for top grades. They, they come with sevens, eights and nines at GCSE. They're applying for A's and uh, A-stars. They're looking for A's and A-stars in their A-levels, maybe becoming part of our Oxbridge programme to go to a top university. But we're just as proud of the students that meet our, our minimum entry requirements of two sixes and four fives, who are looking to do a BTEC programme, looking to do uh, some A-levels and are prepared to work really, really hard. So, Again, you can, you can research these things at different colleges and see what's right for you and we'll progress. And one of the things that, that we um, pr pride ourselves on is, is, is the teaching and learning, but yeah, Caroline, if you want to, if you want to move that on. Um, the, the best thing you can do if you get a chance is, is, as I say, come around on an open day and talk to the different subject teachers in the different subject areas that you are interested in. We have a raft of A-level courses at Severian, and um, 35 different A-levels, I think, and, and uh, five or six vocational subjects as well. But different colleges have got different offers in, in this regard, and there are subjects that we offer that, that may not be on offer elsewhere, and, and you might want to see where it's going to be best for you in that regard. But there are also subjects, even if you decide that you've picked a college that's right for you, you might still be open to what you're going to be studying, and that's absolutely fine. One of the things that students worry about when they're trying to, to decide on a college to progress to, and they, they start to worry as they're looking to, to move to college is, I'm still not sure what I'm going to be studying. You may have that worry at the moment. It is, it is really common, and there are loads of opportunities to work that out. We're working with the year at the moment who are still deciding on their final options and that's no problem for us. We're not putting them under any pressure and I'm so sure the other colleges are the same. Take your time with that regard. If you're in year 10 at the moment, there might be open days, taster days, interviews or course consultations as, as we have, um, opportunities to visit and talk to staff, get your questions answered, but you can still be deciding on, on what you want to study right the way through until summer at the end of year 11. And you can see there, there are a number of subjects that are really popular with us that students may never have studied before. Psychology is our most popular A-level, law is increasingly popular, one of our most popular destination degrees. Huge subject areas for us, not a lot of students have studied them previously, so plenty of time to do your research and find out what's that subject about, will it be interesting to me if we move on. And, and the same with our, our applied courses. We, we don't have a, a range of these as big as some of the FE colleges in the area, but we've had some fantastic success with students that are looking to do a, a BTEC or some of them are now called CTECs um, and uh, are looking for a slightly different route to go to university or, or to the world of apprenticeships or work. Um, I will be talking a little bit more about this on, on Wednesday when, when this comes up in a bit more detail, but there is a range of, of those qualifications available to us as well if we move on. And this is something you should look at whichever college you're applying to. What are they looking for in a student? And we're looking for six good passes at GCSE, as I say. Two of them should be at grade six. And the majority of students are applying for three A-levels at Severian, but you can mix and match A-levels and BTECs. We have a very small number of students doing four. For, for very academically able students that are looking to um, to get the top grades, but we're open to that discussion, and um, is a cautious discussion. And we also look really, really closely at um, the reference provided by your school. That's crucial. Attendance, uh, punctuality, behaviour, uh, efforts at school. 
and that can trip students up. It does every year. They think I'm a bright student, um, or I'm going to pull it around in year eleven in terms of my, my punctuality, my, my attendance. It's really competitive. So Varian ourselves had five thousand applications this year, and um, other colleges have been a similar boat. And we personally are looking really closely to make sure that students are showing the right attitude for college. That's maybe unique to us because we are an, an academic, as I say, um, sixth form that is really hoping for uh, students who are going to come and, and have a little bit more independence. Uh, but the only way we can balance off the, the, the strong results, the, the, the high profile of the college with students being able to you know, come and go from campus, be trusted a little bit more by their teachers, is, um, is making sure that they're showing the right attitude in year 10 and, and year 11. And we'll progress. And take your time, as I say, thinking about the courses that uh, you're interested in. Some of them you, you'll have done for many, many years and you might be passionate about. So sciences, if we move on to the next slide, you might have a career path in mind in science, something like medicine. We've got a fantastic medics programme. Students go into top universities right away uh, across the country. We've had students into Oxford and Cambridge doing medicine in the last couple of years. And you can ask our staff about how they're going to support what that medics programme entails, the, the medics dentists and vets programme or the medical professionals programme. And how that's going to, to help guide you. But if we move on to the next slide, there are other subjects that you might think, I don't know if that's going to be the right one for me. Things like art on this slide, and think about music on the next slide, if, if we move on. If you are interested in creative subjects, then that's absolutely fine. There are always pathways to success, progressing to university and going through a sixth form college like ourselves. And there's no shame at all if you want to do things like drama, which was my subject area, art, music, and um, you need to be studying the things that you are passionate about. And we and the colleges will work with you through the career services to help make sure you've got a great destination for the future. And we'll, we'll skip on again. And um, as I say, we've got a, a fantastic Oxbridge programme which supports students to those universities and has done for a number of years. We've been really happy with the success in, in there, if, if we move on. And if you're not applying for those universities, Oxford and Cambridge, but you, you are a high achieving student, there's a lot of additional support that's built into the timetable as well. And, and that's, again, something that's unique to college, I suppose, that you having additional time in the timetable for, for you to be working on these sorts of things. And we'll, we'll move on because I'm conscious of the time for you. And our students give great feedback and, and do look at this at all the different colleges you're looking at. What are the students saying? And um, ironically, I'm going to skip through the video, which specifically says what our students say and um, I'm, I'm not going to show this because we have a little bit short of time but uh, I think it'll be available on Instagram and on our website and, and it talks about how much they enjoy the community that that they are studying in and and that's another thing to look at when you're picking your college it's community and I, I know from from the different uh, colleges that have been on already they're, they're all prepared to talk about what you can do additional to your to your studies and we do look closely at that we put so much emphasis at this, on the idea of this Avarian community and um, we do a lot of things to make sure that although students are coming to us working very, very hard and expecting to get fantastic grades and go on to top universities, they're also feeling like they're growing as a young person, they're enjoying their time at college and there are loads and loads of enrichment opportunities, trips and lots and lots of things happening throughout the two years that mean that students are, um, are growing as young people, not just uh, getting through their, their, their exams. Most of our, our students um, apply and go to university. Uh, we've had fantastic uptake at Russell Group universities over, over the last couple of years, uh, the last you know, many, many years with us as well. But if you're looking to do an apprenticeship or go straight into the world of work, we'd be happy to support you in that as well. And again, these are questions you can ask of all the different coll colleges and, and see, where, um, see where most of their students go on to or, or what support is in place for those sorts of things as well. Um, I've raced through that, I hope you, you don't mind me going through that at quite a pace, but I, I know you were a little bit over time, so um, if you've got any queries at all, you can email admissions at severian.ac.uk, jump on our website, which uh, is going to be relaunched um, in, the, in the next couple of weeks as well, for lots and lots of information, but hopefully I'll see you an open day or taste day in the future. and. Uh, and do go to all the colleges that you're interested in and find out for yourself. Because don't forget, it's, we're, we're being paid to tell you how great we are, and you have to go and do that research for yourself.
Right. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks very much, Stephen. Some really good advice there to put your research in and make sure that you're making an informed choice, which is exactly what FE Choices is all about. Um, moving on very quickly next, we're going to come to um, Stephen at Cheadle Marple College to talk to us a little bit about the different courses and subjects that are um, available. So good morning, Stephen. Good morning and good morning to everyone. Um, my name is Steve Maple. I'm one of the heads of faculty. I've been out of the college for 21 years as a teacher uh, and more recently as a manager. Uh, when I say recently, that's probably only about 15 years. So, um, yep, I'm as old as I look. Um, I'm going to be telling you, uh, if you can move on to the next slide, Caroline, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to be talking to you about A-levels just for five minutes, about the truth and the lies uh, behind A-levels, all the misapprehension uh, about why they're the best or they're the worst or they're not for me and they're not for you um, and I'm also going to tell you about our college uh, very briefly just to say why you might choose us um, hey Caroline you're really good at this you, you know when I'm going to change well well done um, so um, sorry to sound like a some sort of Tibetan philosophy manual here uh, each learner's truth is different what does that actually mean I think I haven't really been listening to the other ones uh, very much because I'm very busy but um, this idea that You've got to do all the research, etc., yourself and find out who you are. And then you'll know that a B.Tech in public services is the right one for you in the end. Um, perhaps uh, let me tell you about the ideal approach to this. Oh, can you go back? Caroline, sorry. Uh, um, that, um, uh, trigger happy. Um, you might have to go back twice. Um, that, um, this idea of thinking ahead and planning backwards is uh, a very strange uh, thing to say as well think ahead, plan backwards. Um, what it means is instead of looking at your college qualification, then your degree, then your career, um, you should in the ideal world know about uh, your career, your degree uh, and then your college qualifications in that order. There is a problem, Caroline, if you don't mind. Thank you very much. Um, most learners don't know what they want to be. Um, so, uh, Caroline, I'm going to have to ask you to flick on again. Uh, the answer to this is get that advice and guidance. Um, so doing what you're doing now is uh, really important. Um, going to open days, etc., is uh, essential. So uh, if you could flick on, Ca Caroline, let me get to the A-level um, um, presentation part here. So why three A-levels? Um, I'll just really spell this out to you that um, essentially um, most students are going to do three A levels if they choose that program. Now uh, think about it, uh, two A grades and two B grades aren't as good as three A grades. So um, you, you might not ever bother to do more than three because you, you just want to get the high grades in the, those three subjects. Could you flick on Caroline? Um, should I do four A levels? Um, some students that are getting outstanding results at GCSE, we do recommend it. But possibly uh, another way of looking at it is you might do those three A levels and focus on them and get really high grades and then have a part time job, a social life, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. We want uh, students at our college to be well rounded individuals uh, rather than just academic machines. But obviously it, it's your choice. Uh, can you flick on please? Um, a in the A-level means advanced level, doesn't it? Um, and one of the stereotypes about A-levels is that they're much harder than anything you can possibly do on any other course or any apprenticeship, etc. Um, why do people say this? Because it's not strictly true uh, for everyone. Uh, it's because there's more exams than coursework uh, and a lot of people find um, exams harder than coursework. Um, but the thing to remember with A-levels is that 20%, 30% of, uh, of coursework is uh, present in those subjects there, film studies and um, English language. I think in photography, it's even higher. You know, um, it's almost like 100% coursework. So you shouldn't steer clear of A-levels simply because of the alleged uh, assessment methods. Um, lots of them are 100% exam but um, just look at that individual course and, and before you write them off. Uh, next slide, please, Caroline. Um, another thing I wanted to say about the coursework aspect of A-levels and, and vocational qualifications is this notion that uh, exams are hard, harder than coursework. Um, yes, they probably are for most people, but if you think, if you're doing an A-level programme, 
Um, most of what you'll be doing is revising, learning how to revise properly rather than at, at GCSE, um, all the methods of doing that. You get very good at exams. Um, plus, if you do coursework, of course, it's going to be a lot harder. The, the level that you have to reach in coursework is much higher than uh, it is in uh, things like um, uh, exams. So you're going to produce higher quality work. So is it harder? Possibly. Um, is, is what I would say. Next slide, please. Um, just to highlight as well, um, uh, vocational qualifications obviously have a lot more coursework than uh, A-level, so hence why people choose that over A-level sometimes. But I do need to stress that um, uh, these vocational qualifications now all have exams in them. Um, I'll give you one example. Uh, the public service course that we run has 20% uh, exams, so you, you can't escape exams anymore. Um, OK, next slide, please. Um, the best level three option is that what A levels are. Um, there's the Russell Group universities, they're the best universities in our country, as you can see there, things like Oxford, Cambridge, our, our own University of Manchester um, as de destinations. Um, there is the idea that you can only get to those destinations with A levels. Um, that's possibly true in the, these cases um, or that they have a preference for that maybe a little bit uh, but really um, uh, there's it's not the reason why you choose uh, a levels or BTEC. you could uh, just choose another university there's thousands out there which will all get you a degree anyway so don't be pressured by this Russell group uh, university thing choose the course that's right for you which will get you on the career for, uh, that you desire um, okay next slide please um, the other thing that people think about A-levels is that they're more varied and more interesting than, um, and that's part of the challenge as well with um, A-level programmes um, because they've got more to learn. Um, it's probably not true. Uh, as you can see here, um, uh, a three A-level equivalent in health and social care um, clearly has uh, psychology in it, it has anatomy in it, physiology, etc. So. Um, you will get varied courses on whatever level three course um, you go on. Uh, next slide, please, Colin. So just really rough, roughly on um, the A-level programme, you'll take three or four A-levels depending on your GCSE success. A-levels are academically advanced qualifications and allow you to specialise in subjects to a very high level. You tend to be assessed by exams, but some A-levels have a significant coursework element. And an A-level programme is quite varied and appeals to the top universities. I think that's a, as much truth as you can get on A-levels um, uh, without looking at the very specifics. Uh, just compare them with vocational subjects, if you don't mind, Caroline. Um, you'll usually take just one subject uh, with um, a BTEC qualification. Um, the qualifications are academically advanced, equal to A-levels, remember this. Um, and they're accepted by the vast majority of universities. Don't forget that they've got exams in them as well, uh, often around 20%. Uh, the only other thing I would say is uh, the vocational subjects often have more work experience. So you can see that uh, this particular course, Health and Social Care, has a placement once a week in a, a vocational environment. So hospitals, etc. So um, it leads directly to a career almost sooner, if you like. Um, so that might be for you. Um, just next slide, Kai. I, I do want to stress, though, that A-level students have work experience too. So uh, don't don't forget that either. It's, it's um, really is horses for courses here. Uh, research, research, research. OK, I'm going to move on as quickly as I possibly can to our college. Um, uh, just so you see the first bit a vibrant, friendly, successful community community college with a wide range of provision from level one to three. What does that actually mean? It means no matter what happens at the end of your GCSE courses, we have got a course for you. So you could absolutely fail absolutely every single uh, GCSE and we can get you onto a, a program that will get you onto a level two program that will get you onto an A level program eventually. So we've got something for everyone. Um, Really quick summary, uh, the Ofsted report basically means that we're, we're a good college. Um, and I know you can click on Caroline, sorry, <laughs> thanks. Um, 
um, uh, re interesting news. Uh, we are now like this enormous college in a way. Uh, we've just merged uh, on the 4th of May um, last week with Trafford Group. Uh, so um, all that leads to basically is that uh, we've got loads more money now. <laughs> um, so we'll get lots more resources, etc. So uh, that's um, just something we'd share. Uh, next um, slide. I just thought I'd tell you why people choose us. Um, so um, the, uh, what is our unique selling point? Why are we better than all the other colleges? Some people think uh, part of the most obvious is that we get the best grades in, in the area, um, according to recent um, uh, studies. Um, but I think um, I want to explain why that is the case. Uh, if you look at some of our local competitors, you can see how big they are in terms of the pe how many people have they got on the campus. So they've got about 2000, as you can see there, whereas we only have about 800. In fact, it's more like 725 on each uh, 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 campus. So what that means is we've got smaller classes. Um, so you get miles more attention and support. We've got that unfair advantage that even like private schools can't afford to provide. Uh, so yeah, we have all those other things that the, the other colleges have like excellent teaching and first class support, but we really do treat you as an individual because we've got the time to do it. We've just got um, an easier job because we've got fewer students. Um, so you're not a name or a, sorry, you are a name, not a number and uh, students are individuals to us. We also, because we're a college, we treat you like an adult rather than, um, uh, you know, a, a school uh, uh, student. Uh, so you won't have any uniforms, etc. cetera. Um, I would like to stress though, um, we're all supportive and friendly and all that sort of stuff. Um, we treat you like an adult, but there's a lot of challenge at our college. That's how we get the grades as well. So we are pushing you to uh, achieve uh, the best you can. Uh, next slide, please, Caroline. Um, really simple slide. Uh, if you want to apply to our college, just go to the website and click apply now. Thank you very much, Caroline. Uh, just wanted to talk to you about uh, one of our students, uh, just give you a guidance uh, of how people apply for our college. Um, he came to us uh, with this rough idea. He didn't know what he wanted to be. He just had uh, the traditional sort of, I think I want to work at Media City. I want it to be a, maybe a photographer, maybe a website designer. It was so vague. Um, and so uh, he applied for the following programs, if you don't mind, Caroline. Um, so he had this rough idea of what he wanted to do and uh, put that on his application form. And obviously that's far too many. Then he had an interview at our college and we narrowed it down to three for him. Yet this is a really important thing. On enrollment day, after you know, seven or eight weeks afterwards, he ended up changing his mind, not massively, but uh, he replaced film studies for media. Now, I think this is a really good example of the process that you're going through. You'll have this rough idea of what your career is, possibly ish. Then you'll be interested in certain subjects. You put them all down. You get more and more advice and guidance from the colleges that you visit and you narrow it down to that college and that, that course. Um, and then even on enrollment day, you may make a switch. So um, I'm trying to take pressure away from you here. Do you, do you see you don't have to do it until you do it, but the more you do of this, the, the better. Um, so um, yeah, I, I don't know if you can. Can you go to that website, Caroline? Uh, the first little link there. Um, it's it's just to show you on our website. Uh, if it doesn't work, it, it doesn't really matter. No, don't don't worry though. <laughs> um, basically, if you go to our website, on every single course right at the bottom, it has this uh, lovely little um, pathway uh, program. And what it does is uh, it goes, say you look at film studies or philosophy or whatever it is that you're looking at. It'll say this leads to this degree, which then leads to this career, uh, and this is your starting salary. So uh, it's such a shame that Caroline can't show you that because it's great. Uh, you just keep on clicking it and it shows you each um, a career that it leads to and it will give you ideas and you might be able to start uh, putting a program together based on that. Uh, at our college as well, once you apply to us, you'll be offered a guidance interview where we will sit down with you and plan that program with you as clearly as possible. Uh, of course, you can email us with anything at any time and we can ring you, etc, etc. So we're very contactable. 
Uh, next slide, please, Caroline. Um, just so you know, we're going to try and do real open days. Uh, there's the dates. Come in and see us. Uh, that's all planned uh, as long as the restrictions allow us to. So there's those dates. Uh, if you've already applied, we're even going to, if you just press it one more time, I think the welcome days will pop up, Caroline, uh, where if you've already applied to us, uh, you'll be able to um, uh, come into the college on the, these days as well. You might have to click it one more time as well. Uh, we're almost done, by the way. Uh, this is our last slide coming up, I think. Um, uh, just that's when you'd enrol. Uh, uh, it begins on the 26th of August. Uh, inductions on the 9th and we start teaching on the 10th. Uh, so other than that, I think uh, the last slide is a, a, a nice good luck message in your GCSEs for you. Uh, work really hard. Uh, you will um, be able to get something at our college and um, but just choose the right uh, college for you. And that's it from me. Thank you very much. Sorry to go. I think I probably went over, didn't I? As I always do. Sorry. That's fine. Don't worry, Stephen. It was really insightful and everybody has gone slightly over this morning. We're running a little bit behind schedule for those who are joining us live. Um, that um, pathway website example that you gave, I've seen it before and it's really, really insightful. So um, the links to everything will be included in our um, pre-recorded sessions, which will go um, live on the website within a couple of hours for anyone watching it back. They'll be able to click on that link. Otherwise, what I will do is I will make sure that it's available for our e evening session tonight so that you can demonstrate that just as an example for anyone who's undecided and how those pathways work. So thanks very much for joining us this morning, Stephen. And um, we've got two more presenters for you still to come. Um, next up, we have James joining us from um, Clarendon Sixth Form, who's going to be talking a little bit um, about um, the different options for study. So James, if I can ask you to just pop on your camera and I'll switch you to be the presenter for this morning. There we go. Over to you, James. Thank you. Uh, good morning. I'm James. I'm the school liaison coordinator here at Clarendon Sixth Form College. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about the college, what we offer um, and how your timetable will look at college and how the A-levels and vocational A-levels work. Next slide. So the college has a long tra uh, tradition um, of Sixth Form success. Um, we had 100% A-level pass rate in 2020 and we achieved our best ever high grades. Um, or our students did, should I say. Um, at our most recent inspection, we were rated a good provider by Ofsted. Um, and we have outstanding teachers who will stretch and inspire. They want the best from you um, and they want you to do your best um, to achieve those high grades so you can progress on to university, higher apprenticeships and employment. Um, and we have very, very, very strong learner satisfaction rates. And we know this because we carry out regular um, questionnaires and surveys with our students to find out how they're feeling about college, if there's any ways we can improve the college um, or if there's any extra support that they might need um, to help them through college as well. And we also had our best ever enrolment numbers in 2020. So as a college, we are growing um, and we are getting more and more um, enrolments each year. So we're getting more and more students on our books um, and helping them to pro progress into their future careers. Um, these are just a few of the quotes from our most recent inspection. So they said things like the achievement rates for students are high. So when you're looking at a college, you need to look at things like this because obviously it shows that we are helping our students to progress. Um, learners make good progress and they found that our teachers, um, is the teaching is of a good quality um, and our methods of learning assessment are good, um, particularly at Clarendon Sixth Form College because we are a sister college to Thameside College who provide the majority of the vocational qualifications. Next slide, please. So this is just a little bit about the history of the campus. So we started out as High Grammar School in 1957 and then we became a sixth form college in 1979. We then relocated to our 10 million pound building that's in the centre of Ashton um, that you see today. If you go into the centre of Ashton, you can't miss the Clarendon Sixth Form College building. And it's dead easy to access because we're, on our doorstep, we've got the, the links to the local transport. So we've got the trams, the train stations directly across the road and the tram stops. Um, and obviously it's on all the major cycle routes um, if you, you're traveling, traveling in that, that mode of transport. Next slide, please. These are some of the courses that we offer. Um, these are our A-level programs. So you can see these are the more traditional courses, things like the sciences, um, the business studies courses, things like um, further maths and maths, geography, government and politics, things like that. Next slide. These are our vocational A-level programs. So you can see these, these do differ to the 
Um, traditional A levels, so you can mix and match. Um, so you could pick two A levels, one vocational A level, or two vocational A levels, and one traditional A level. Um, and you can pick any of these subjects. And sometimes, obviously, our students would pick courses that would complement each other. So you pick one of these, say, um, something like health and social care, and then you might pick up your sciences as well from the A level um, options. Next slide, please. We then offer um, a limited number of vocational qualifications, things like acting, animation and games design. We have our own theatre. Um, in photography, we have our own darkroom and things like that. So the, the facilities are uh, really, really to a high standard for our learners, obviously, to help them achieve um, their qualifications so it's, it, they can move on and progress. Next slide, please. So this is just to show, show you and highlight um, what your day would look like if you chose to study with us here at Clarendon Sixth Form College. So a big part of your timetable would be your chosen courses. Um, so that takes up about half your time at college. Um, you'll then be expected to do some self-directed study, which is where you will be given tasks to either do at home. You can use the facilities at college, the computer suites or the libraries to study, um, but you'll be given tasks to do and complete yourself. Um, and then they'll be handed back into our teaching staff who will mark your work. You'll then be given the opportunity to do work experience and employability skills. Again, this is a really important part of your timetable and it will enhance your CV and things like that um, when you're looking at um, jobs and things like that. You might get work experience potentially with an employer that might take you on in the future. Um, you'll get that opportunity to work there as well. And we also like to give our students the opportunity to do enrichment. So this is where you might pick up new skills, meet new people. Again, it's an opportunity for you to enhance your CV and also enhance your time at college. It's obviously the main focus is on your studies, but also you need to be learning new skills as well. Um, and then you'll have your tutorials and also maths and English if you don't reach your grade four or above in maths and English at school. But obviously, hopefully you'll all be hitting those high grades in your GCSEs. You also have access to our student hub where you'll meet your progress tutors to make sure that you're staying on track. The learning hub where you can access our computer suites and libraries. Um, learning support, so if you have any additional support needs at school, um, we can hopefully replicate that support at college, which will obviously help support you through your time with us. Um, wellbeing, again, another really important um, service that we offer is around your wellbeing, obviously around mental health, drugs, sexual health, things like that. And we also have our financial support, things like our pass um, bursaries and things like that you can discuss there. And again, next steps, it's really important when you're choosing your colleges to look at your next steps as well. So you're working backwards from um, if you're deciding to go to university, um, study a further apprenticeship or go straight on to employment will help you with those next steps. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Sorry, James, I think that we're struggling with the um, feed quality on the video. So that's fine, yeah, move, move on to the next slide, please. That's fine. I'll put the um, links up to that later. It's a great little video showing you firsthand around some of the facilities of the college. So be sure to uh, pop that online for everybody to have a look at later. So just a little bit about our entry requirements. So for the A levels, you're required to get five GCSEs, grade four above, plus maths and English language or literature. Um, again, the same for A level, uh, the vocational A levels. And then we're looking at the level three programs. You need four GCSEs, grade four above, plus maths and or English literature and language at grade three or above, or three GCSEs, grade three or above for the level twos. Um, with the A levels and vocational A levels, some of the courses have additional entry requirements. However, you'll be able to find out more about those on our website. Website. Next slide, please. So just nip back to the last one, sorry. So our futures programme at Clarendon Sixth Farm is a bespoke programme offering extra support for students who wish to go on to more prestigious universities. Um, such as Oxford, Cambridge, those types of universities. And some of our students have gone on to those universities, um, the ones that have left in this September just gone. 
Um, we do the extended project qualification again it's um, an extended academic writing skills um, it gives you extra UCAS points that some universities value um, and it might be the, the difference between you getting in certain universities there's more information on these on our YouTube channel um, I've done I've done a video on these um, if you want to visit our YouTube channel and there's links to that at the end um, and obviously study skills and independent learning um, we want all our students to be successful so there will be extra support for students with the study skills uh, revision classes um, and all those sorts of things next slide please just to give you an idea this is some of the universities that our pro uh, students progressed on to last year um, and the sort of universities that you might want to progress on to once you've completed your studies with us again obviously we look at employment and higher apprenticeships for our students so we'll support you with your UCAS applications CVs interview techniques and things like that next slide please these are some of our top um, high achievers from 2020 obviously you'll all be aspiring to get these grades and if you put the effort in like these students have done you can achieve these types of grades and obviously it'll, it'll give you a good um, standing for um, progressing on to your future careers whether that's obviously university higher apprenticeships or employment next slide please so if you decide Clarendon Sixth Form College is one of your choices, you want to apply for Clarendon Sixth Form, you can um, visit our website, apply on there. There's a mobile friendly version of our application as well. And there's the QR codes there if you want to just um, use your phone to access those. And again, for our prospectus, if you've not seen our prospectus, you can use the QR code or just visit our website to download that. Next slide, please. Our virtual open day is live. Um, we launched that on the 9th of November. Um, but we left it up because there's loads and loads of information on there that will be useful for you choosing your colleges and and obviously which courses you want to choose. We've got the pr uh, pr principles presentation on there. There's um, our live webinars which we uploaded onto there. Um, there's the Q&A sessions and obviously how to again how to apply to the college. I'll just put this in. Um, it's a little bit more information in the difference between A levels, vocational A levels, and vocational qualifications. So the A levels are in-depth knowledge. You'll learn in-depth knowledge of individual subjects, and you'll take mostly formal examinations at the end of the two-year program. And students generally select three of those courses. With the vocational A levels, um, you combine coursework with formal examinations, so it gives you a bit of a variety of different ways of learning. Um, and generally, again, students would choose a mix of vocational A levels with the traditional A levels. So you could, like I said earlier on, um, you can mix and match those vocational A levels with the traditional A levels. Um, and as with A levels, you select three subjects again. And then your vocational qualifications are standalone. So you'll only select one of these subjects. So it needs to be something that you're really passionate about and interested in studying. Um, a vocational qualification level three is equivalent to three A levels. So it's a little bit of a myth if you do um, a vocational qualification, you can't get to new university. That's a complete myth. If you do a level three, you have exactly the same um, or equivalent to three A levels. So you do have the same access to those universities and you assess by both coursework and practical assessment for these courses. Next slide, please. So if you're not already done so, you can follow us at Clarendon 6, all our social media. Um, we keep our updates on there. We regularly update with um, news stories, um, student case studies. There's loads of information about that, what's going on in the college on our social media. Um, and that's it from me. Um, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak to you all. Thanks very much, James. A real whistle stop tour of anything. And if anybody does have any questions, they can pop onto the um, Clarendon Sixth website um, and um, pop them an email um, to um, give you further guidance and support. But there's a huge amount of information available. So thank you very much indeed um, to James for joining us this morning and giving us a really good introduction to things. Um, last up this morning, um, we have got um, Danny from Loretto College, um, who's going to be talking to us all about um, what comes next after um, college and what those um, routes to university and other steps might be. So I'll pass you across to Danny now, who's our final presenter of the day. Thanks, Danny. Thanks very much, Caroline. And yes, I've been asked to talk about what comes after college, which might seem a little bit fast forward thinking, but it is really a good starting point to get you off uh, off the, the mark as to where you want to move to. Uh, next slide, please, Caroline. So the advice at this stage 
is to have a look at the following things. And if we just click through these, um, considering all the avenues, all the opportunities and factoring it into your decision making, because at this stage, there's lots of options to you, uh, which is both really exciting uh, and also it could change uh, your choices. There are certain things that might um, uh, guide you in, in that natural direction. For instance, if you wanted to go and study medicine, we know that to do that, you need your A-levels in biology and chemistry in another subject. And then you go on to university and get your medical training that way. And which is why thinking about the future is a good idea because you can work backwards to piece the jigsaw together. So let's have a look at university. Next slide, please. Um, and the next two slides. The grades that university require on are um, differ based on whether they're a research university or a vocational university. And we usually find that the research universities have slightly higher uh, grade um, requirements than the vocational ones. The vocational courses are going to look at skills and qualities that you're going to bring to that, um, which is slightly different to the research. Next slide, please. Also have a think about the popularity of the courses. So I've said already medicine and dentistry, they're really highly selective. Um, and you might also have a think about where they position themselves onto the league tables. And you can look at the Times Higher Education World Ranking if you want. Um, also, if the subject that you're choosing to study has a lot of resources or specialist facilities, uh, numbers can be restricted as well. So bear all that in mind. Next slide, please. I know all the providers today have touched on to this, but if you decide A-levels or BTECs, you will carry with you what's called a tariff, a UCAS point tariff. And each of the grades that are listed there equal a certain amount of tariff points. And on the UCAS website and on other university websites, they indicate how many points you need in order to move on to those. And if you just move through to the uh, BTEC extended diplomas, as you can see there, and crucially on the next slide, you'll see the BTEC subsidiary diploma, which is now called the extended certificate in the new in the new era. Um, but these, as you can see, 56 points, that is the same as an A star at A level, uh, which is fantastic um, uh, because they are like for like. Um, so please don't believe the myth that if you do BTEC, you will be um, less um, at an advantage. So next, apprenticeships. If we move on, there's, the main components are as follows. It's a real job with a, a real employer. Um, uh, you get paid a salary, you are um, get your qualifications and experience, you'll have a contract of employment with sick pay, support from the provider, and that usually takes between one to four years as well. Uh, next slide, please. Another common myth is that you once you've done your apprenticeship, you, you won't necessarily get a job. But actually, um, if we click again, Caroline, the majority of apprenticeships stay in employment. And actually, in the research of 2017, we saw that 90 percent of those uh, did that, which is fantastic. Next slide, please. And if we just click again, so the animation moves away. Um, these are the types of employers that are offering apprenticeships and the scope and the range of that is just wonderful. And these have developed and they will increase in number, of course, because of now they offer for T levels at some institutions as well. So please do your research and have a look at that. Um, if you want to find out, um, here's a good example. Next slide, please. You can go to find an apprenticeship and just do your research and you can start applying through that process. And finally, and there's only one slide on this one, it may be that you're thinking about employment. Now, employment for you could be in a range of, uh, of, of areas um, and places. So please make sure that you are, you've, you've found the right route. And remember, the other two routes that we've mentioned, university and apprenticeships, will ultimately lead to employment. Um, so this in itself um, will be the eventuality for, for all of us, we hope. So there's my whistle stop guide to what to, what comes next after A-level. So hopefully many of you will be joining us at Loretto Sixth Form College. We're an outstanding Sixth Form College. We're very proud of that. We're also uh, an oversubscribed, oversubscribed college. So we have applications from thousands of young people every year and they come and join our very special community at Loretto. Um, we've got an excellent pass rate of 99.8% um, and high grades uh, at 60%. We've also got um, A grades, A to star and A grades, sorry, at 1,479. Um, so the courses that we're able to offer you are as follows. We have advanced courses, which is the, the, the main bulk of our uh, subjects are in those in that area at A level and BTEC uh, extended cert and then intermediate level two and GCC maths and English resets. It is a government requirement that any student that doesn't have um, a grade four in English and, and maths needs to carry on with that. Here's how that might look on your timetable. You could either do three 
A levels um, or a mixture of two A levels and a BTEC or indeed a full time BTEC, which is equivalent to three A levels. A lot of our students, um, you know, obviously they're all individuals and they've got to choose the right course for them. So please make sure that of all those options, you have a good look at our courses on our website. Next slide, please. Our faculty areas are broken down into three main areas, science and maths. Next slide, please. Social science and next slide languages and arts and you might see on there some subjects that you're very familiar with but also some subjects that you've never heard before and we would really encourage you to have a look at our website and have a look at those courses because you never know a course that you're not studying at the moment might actually be your career path for the future now in that um progression i mentioned about university before we have over 1200 students moving on to university or to apprenticeships uh, just last year 75 uh, going on to medicine, dentistry and veterinary science and we also have 23 students this year going on to uh, studying at Oxbridge and that's the University of Oxford and Cambridge. We're also very very proud as I've already said to be an outstanding Ofsted provider um, and one of the reasons for that uh, outstanding is not just the core curriculum that we offer but also because we educate the whole person we truly believe in that that it's not just about getting your courses because all the college providers that are available to you will offer you uh, uh, your courses of course we do but we are very proud of our enrichment and opportunities next slide please and that might range from the model united nations the debate club the college performances duke of edinburgh silver and gold the concerts all of those things because they make make our community um, a really vibrant one and one which will give you a range of skills that might further you than your curriculum would do so we're very very pleased to do that the facilities that we offer as well are outstanding we have um, purpose-built facilities across the campus be it our science labs in ball building or we've got our tv and recording studios uh, it suites and our two college theatres as well we've got a really strong history at the college um, and we've been on this site since 1851 and as you can see there, our chapel building just there, that's the same building that it was hundreds of years ago. Um, and also the building behind it is more representative of the rest of campus. And that future always leads towards your, sorry, that history always leads towards your future. Um, and for many students, um, it's led to uh, a lot of success. So how do you apply to Loretto? Well, it's very straightforward. On our website, there is an application form. And if we, um, but the most important thing about that application is the reference that comes from the high school and that reference will indicate um, how you've been as a student um, and whether or not um, your course choices are appropriate for you as a young person so make sure you speak to your schools in terms of how you get to us we're very well served by a dedicated uh, college bus system but also by public transport as well we have the 85 and 86 that come straight from piccadilly outside the college gates some students will need some financial support we understand that and we've got a process for that but you just inquire about that at our open days or indeed at our um, new student events as we move forward as well if you wanted to find out any more you can head to our website and you can also head to our social media pages as well and get in touch with us i'll be returning later for the um for the parents um q a as well um, and we are um really proud to um you know be providing lots of people in manchester with um an education that we believe is outstanding so good luck in everything you're doing and i hope you make um a really informed choice and thanks to the team at FE Choices for setting this up. It's been great. Thank you. Thanks very much, Danny. Um, apologies about the slides. They seem to take on a mind of their own. To want no to problem. Do. No problem. It probably uh, is probably the timings from a, from a previous version. No problem. <laughs> no, it was absolutely brilliant. They kept ticking on to the next one as though they it was incredibly well rehearsed and you knew exactly what was coming up next. It was like a little bit of magic. So thank you very much for that. And okay. as Danny mentioned, he's going to be joining us um, later for those evening sessions. Um, so that brings us to the end of all of our um, provider presentations for this morning, uh, which just leads me to say um, that the main thing that has been touched on today um, is really the importance of um, making informed choices and doing your research um, so just make sure as a follow up today that you really do start that dialogue and get talking about what those options are it's clear from the presence today that there are presentations today rather that there are lots of different routes to get into university 
all for um, study at 16 and at 18 on a part time or full time basis, routes into employment, as well as options depending on whether you get the really high top grades that we all want to aspire to um, or whether it doesn't go according to plan and you need to consider different options as well, whether you prefer something that's more academic and structured or something that's more vocational and skills based. There really is a range of different options. Now, we've obviously covered off A levels and T levels today, but if after hearing that you're not 100% sure whether they are the right pathway for you once you turn 16, or if you're thinking about your GCSE options now with a different pathway after secondary school other than A levels and T levels in mind, we do have lots of information coming up throughout the rest of the week, or if you are watching this back on YouTube, a range of other videos to look out for as well. Um, so our next video will be on apprenticeships, traineeships and supported internships. Um, our um, video after that, so on Wednesday we will be talking about um, vocational and technical qualifications, short courses and study programmes. On Thursday we're going to look at all of those non-traditional career routes um, and we've got some fantastic providers joining us to talk about um, alternative provision as well. And then on Friday, we look a little bit more at UCAS points and routes to university and other ways of getting a degree other than attending university and what else there is to do um, after college or sixth form. Um, in terms of the resources that are available, so all of the um, videos from today, uh, from our classroom assembly videos in the morning to this provider presentation will be recorded and put on YouTube um, for you to watch back or revisit if there's something today that maybe you missed or you want to come back to, do check out those videos and be sure to share them as well. The more people that you can get um, watching in terms of friends, family members, um, your peers at, at um, school, the more you can have those informed conversations. All of the information is on um, our social media channels using the hashtag FE Choices including links to all of the providers that you've heard from and will be hearing from throughout the week. So uh, be sure to go on those. Um, you can see the descriptions in the bottom left hand corner about all of our social media feeds. Um, as a couple of today's presenters has mentioned, we are holding a Zoom Q&A session this evening where you'll be able to um, submit your questions um, either in advance um, or via the live chat function. If anyone's got any questions, you can send them to us on social media um, or by sending an email to info at stockport-jobsmatch.co.uk. And as mentioned, all the information for today, including complete career guides to A-levels and T-levels, um, links to all of the providers, their prospectuses, their websites, their course listings, um, and an overview as to the provision um, available, um, you can um, visit um, stockport-jobsmatch forward slash career hyphen options. Um, so thank you very much to everybody um, for joining us today. We managed to pull the time back slightly and have only overrun by a few minutes. And we look forward to um, seeing some of you at our presentations throughout the week. Thank you.